Pearls of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Abu Zar, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said to me, Don't consider any good thing insignificant, even if it were that you meet your brother with smiling face. Sahih Muslim, Volume 4, Kitabul Bir, Vassala Waladab. Book of Virtues, Good Manners, and Joining of the Ties of Relationships, Chapter 1093, Hadith Number 6359. Oh, you believe, give charity for the pleasure of Allah, the pleasure of Allah. Oh, you believe. Read the Qur'an every night of Ramadan, night of Ramadan. Welcome, O Ramadan, it is Ramadan, it is Ramadan. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam and humanity, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. Welcome to the show, Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakia. I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers, and today we will be discussing the topic Acts Recommended and Discouraged whilst fasting, part two. Dr. Zakia, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you today? Alhamdulillah, Allah barik fi. Alhamdulillah. Masha, alhamdulillah. Dr. Zakia, could you just mention the acts which are discouraged, uh, which are contrary to the sunnah of fasting? Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahibi ajmain amma baad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب شرح صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني أفكر قولي The acts which are discouraged and contrary to the sunnah besides the ones we said should be recommended I won't repeat that it's just the opposite it is a person should not say the niyyah aloud while fasting the niyyah it should not be said aloud number two is a person should not eat excessively during iftar or in the night. Number three, a person should not get angry. Point number four is that people read the Taravi very fast. They rush through the Taravi. And point number five is people socialize during Aitakaf. Which are the actions discouraged in Ramadan which are also prohibited otherwise? Could you say something about those actions? The actions which are normally prohibited and specifically during Ramadan also it's prohibited it is backbiting and slandering number one one of the major sins number two is false speech and telling lies number three is verbal abuse and swearing number four is vulgar speech number five is rumor mongering and gossiping number six is false action number seven is listening to un-Islamic songs and music. Number eight is watching un-Islamic programs on the television and un-Islamic movies. Number nine is reading un-Islamic magazines and reading un-Islamic books. Number ten is going to un-Islamic websites. Number eleven is wastage of food. And uh, number twelve is extravagant and being spendthrift. Dr. Zakir, how do we admonish a person who does not guard his tongue whilst fasting in the month of Ramadan? Guarding the tongue is very important because many a times or most of the time the tongue can cause more damage to a person than whether it be physical torture or whatever it is. You know, tongue. It's a person to be careful of the tongue. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, and there are various say hadith dealing with this topic. If you read the hadith of Musannaf ibn Abi Shaiba, 
volume number 5, in the book of manners, hadith number 26490, Ibn Masood, may Allah be pleased with him, he says that by Allah, there is nothing more deserving than the extended control of the tongue. And there are many verses in the Quran where Allah says in Surah Qaf, chapter number 50, verse number 18, that not a word that you say which is not written by a sentinel without noting it down. That means every word that you say is being written down by an angel. Further it's mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 53. Allah says that say to the believers that they should say things which are best. And Satan, many a time, he sows discord amongst the people, amongst the human beings. And Satan to you is an avowed enemy. So Allah says, and guides us in the Quran, that you will be careful when you use your tongue. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, this hadith mentioned in Sayyid Bukhari, volume number 8, hadith number 6484, where our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, that a Muslim to another Muslim, he should not harm him by his tongue or his hands. That a Muslim is a person who does not harm the other Muslim by his hand or by his tongue. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad further said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 8, hadith number 6474, where our beloved Prophet said, that anyone who can guarantee the safety, that is the chastity, of what is between the two jaw bones, talking about the tongue, and what is between the two legs, talking about the private part, he will be guaranteed paradise. The person who can guarantee the chastity, the safety of the tongue and the private part, he will be guaranteed paradise. My beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, further said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, one number eight, hadith number 6475, that he said that he who believes in Allah and the last day, he should either speak what is good or he should keep quiet. That means when you open your tongue, speak what is good, otherwise keep quiet. And a Prophet also said, as I mentioned in several hadith of Sahih Bukhari, volume number 3, book of fasting, hadith number 1894, hadith number 1904, that fasting is a shield. So fasting helps you to protect and helps you in self-control and a person should guard his tongue, that is the best for him. Indeed, Dr. Zaki, it seems like these are lessons that we need to take on board all of the time, not just in Ramadan. The next important topic, I want to know the, what is the ruling regarding a person who commits falsehood of the tongue was fasting in Ramadan. A person who says false things or lies during the month of Ramadan, as the beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 3, in the book of fasting, hadith number 1903, that a person who does not leave his false actions and false speech, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not require him to leave his food and drink. That means a person who keeps on lying and continues doing his false action and false tongue, Allah does not require him to leave his food or drink, indicating that that doesn't mean the fast will break. If you fast, this is not one of the things that break the fast, but the reward that you get for fasting, it will be diminished. And if you do a sin, such as telling a lie, but natural, what reward you want to get while fasting, it will be diminished, or maybe it will nullify. As the beloved Prophet Muhammad also said, it's mentioned in Hadith of Ibn Majah, volume number 3, book of fasting, Hadith number 1690, that there are many people who fast, but do not get any reward. It is as though they are fasting only for hunger. That means if you do such acts of false deeds, of false action, your reward is not there, as though you are just keeping yourself hungry, or starving or dieting, the main purpose that you learn self-restraint is defeated. May Allah encourage us and help us to perform righteous actions which we benefit from in this world and the hereafter. Inshallah. Next question, what are the dangers of backbiting and gossip mongering during the month of Ramadan? One of the major sins in Islam, it is slandering and backbiting. And Allah says in the Quran in Surah Humza, chapter number 104, verse number 1, وَيْلُلْ لِكُلِّ هُمَزَةِ اللُّمَزَى Vote to every kind of backbiter and slanderer. That you have to woe to everyone who backbites and slanders. And Allah says in the Quran in Surah Hujurat, chapter number 49, 
verse number 12. Let avoid suspicion. Because sometimes suspicion is a sin. Do not speak ill about anyone behind the back. Are you ready to eat the meat of your dead brother? And Allah continues and saying that nay, you would abhor it. Here Allah gives the example that a person who backbites, it is as though he is eating his own brother. Now eating the meat of your own brother is haram. And further it says, eating dead meat. Eating dead meat is also haram. So if you backbite, you are committing a double sin. Not only eating the meat of your brother, eating the flesh of your dead brother. So it is a very grave sin. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sahih Muslim, volume number 4, hadith number 6265 where Prophet Muhammad asked the Sahabas that do you know what is backbiting? They say that the Messenger of Allah knows the best. So Prophet Muhammad says that if a person speaks about somebody else behind his back which he would not have liked that is called as backbiting. Speaking about somebody behind his back which the person would not like is called as backbiting. So one of the Sahaba he asked that O Prophet, what if the thing I have spoken is the truth or the fault which I mentioned does exist in the person? So the Prophet said that if what you have spoken is the truth and the fault does exist, it is called as backbiting, otherwise it is called as slandering. So backbiting is a grave sin. There is another Sahih Hadith mentioned in Sunan Abu Dawud, volume number 3, in the book of Manners, Hadith number 4857, where Aisha, may I please with her, the wife of the Prophet, she speaks about Safiya and says that she is such a such thing, meaning she is short-statured. The Prophet immediately says that what you have said, if your words were mixed in the sea, it would spoil the full sea. Further it's mentioned in Sunan Abu Dawud, volume number 3, in the book of Manners, Hadith number 4860, where it's mentioned, Anas Milavi please with him, he says that Prophet Muhammad said, when he was taken up to heaven, that he saw some people whose nails were made of copper and they were scratching their faces and their breast. And when he asked that, who are these people? So the reply was, these are the people who backbited, indicating that backbiting is a grave sin. And it is one of the major sins which people should abstain from. And many of us, they do it unknowingly, not realizing that it's a grave sin, we should abstain from it. And the Prophet also said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 8, in the Book of Manners, Hadith number 6056, Al-Kiptat, that is rumor monger, he shall not enter paradise. So these Hadiths we come to know that we have to be careful, we should guard our tongue, especially from backbiting and gossip mongering. May Allah indeed guard our tongue against falling into these errors. Inshallah. We'll see you soon after the short break. It is Islam is still spreading because it is not the religion of paper. Islam is a way of life. Words of warning. On the day of judgment, every human being is vulnerable to be touched by hellfire. Abdullah Hakim Quick. Men have rights over women, but women also have rights over men. Mamdu Muhammad. We should remember what have we prepared for the day of judgment. Reminder. The best time for a person who's fasting to make dua is while breaking his fasting. There is nothing that draws you closer to Allah better than obligatory acts. I want to, to fast every single day of the year. This is not acceptable. In Ramadan, there is Laylatul Qadr, the night of destiny. So one night is equivalent to 1,000 months whatever you do in that night. Zamadan Fit Issues Dr. Abu Amina Bilal Phillips Doubts about the existence of Allah He has disbelieved in Allah. Belief is based on truth. To worship God's creation this is called shirk. If we really feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then our lives would be Allah looks into an individual's level of faith 
And if he sees that his faith is strong, then he puts a strong trial on him. Fire of faith. Yasir Fazaga. Islam is not one horizontal line where everything is equally the same. That is not Islam. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the greatest liberator that humanity has ever known, that humanity will ever know. We are the best ummah that was erected for the welfare of mankind. Don't live today as if there's no tomorrow. Poverty is never celebrated in Islam. As Muslims, self-pity does not exist. Watch your character, that becomes your destiny. Watch Yasir Fazaga in Here to Hereafter. It is Ramadan. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam and humanity, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the show, Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakir. I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers. And today we are discussing the topic, acts recommended and discouraged whilst fasting. Dr. Zakir, regarding other issues or other acts which are discouraged, which we haven't already covered, can we now mention other acts which are discouraged during the month of Ramadan? The other acts which are discouraged during the month of Ramadan is that many people, they sleep the full day because they're awake in the night and they only get up for the salah and they go back. They convert the day into night, night into day, which is not the purpose of fasting. Number two, many people, they are lazy and inactive during the day. Number three, many people kill their time during the daytime with things like play, game, amusement, rather than doing things which are encouraged and sunnah of the Prophet. Number four, many of them, they give a star party rather to show off than to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number five, many people, they ask the women folk in the house to cook a variety of dishes for sohur and for iftar, thus making most of the women spend major portion of the time in the month of Ramadan in the kitchen, rather than spending time in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sixth mistake that people make is that they spend a lot of time in renovation of the house in the month of Ramadan, trying to prepare for it rather than worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The seventh thing that discouraged is many people stay awake the full night and indulge in activities which are unproductive rather than worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number eight is that many people they spend time in excessive socializing after Tarawih, after Qiyam al -Lail. Number nine is many people spend time in shopping they spend most part of the night in shopping. Number 10 is that they spend excessive time in eating the full night. Number 11 is many of them they spend the night loitering and roaming about rather than worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number 12 is that many of them they spend the last ashra, the last 10 days preparing for Eid rather than worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these acts should be discouraged. May Allah encourage us towards spending our time productively during the month of Ramadan. Dr. Zakir, why is it encouraged to acquire religious knowledge or Islamic knowledge during the blessed month of Ramadan? As far as acquiring knowledge is concerned, the first guidance given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the glorious Quran, it was not to offer salah, it was not to fast, it was not to perform hajj, but it was ikra. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Ikra, or Surah Allah, chapter number 96, verse number 1, Ikra bismi rabbika lazi khalaq, khalakal insana min alaq, verse number 1 and 2, which means, read, recite in the name of the Lord who has created, who has created the human being from something which clings a leech-like substance. So the first guidance is given to the humankind in the glorious Quran was to read. It doesn't only say read, it says read in the name of thy Lord. That means reading is important, acquiring knowledge is important, but acquiring knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of our deen, is the utmost important. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Mujadila, chapter number 58, verse number 11, He says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has raised the rank of those people who believe and those who have been granted knowledge. Allah says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 269, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants wisdom to whom he pleases. 
and to whoever he grants wisdom he raises them in rank and it is for those people who understand and the beloved prophet musa alaihi wasallam he also said it's mentioned in sahih bukhari one number one hadith number 71 that the beloved prophet said that allah subhanahu wa taala to whoever he wants to do good he makes them advanced in the religious knowledge that means he gives them religious knowledge so whoever allah wants to do a favor on allah subhanahu wa taala gives him knowledge of the deen a beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it's mentioned in sahih muslim poem number 3 hadith number 4005 a beloved prophet said that the moment a person dies after he dies all his activities cease except for three whatever good deeds he gets he ceases after the person dies except for three a person who has done recurring charity a person who has given knowledge to other people and the person whose pious children pray for the parents after they are dead that means after a person dies all the good deeds cease except for three if a person has done some recurring charity that sadqa jariya has done some charity from work which is keep on regularly rotating and helping people so that's no sadqa jariya the other is the knowledge that a person gives and after he gives the knowledge he imparts the knowledge to somebody else and he keeps on utilizing that knowledge of deen in helping humanity that's sadqa jariya and the last is the pious children who pray for the deceased parents therefore knowledge is very important and allah also says in the quran in surah nahl chapter number 16 verse number 43 and surah anbiya chapter number 21 verse number 7 first alu ahl zikri in kuntum la ta'lamun that if you do not know ask the person who possesses the knowledge allah says ask the knowledge of people so therefore a person who has knowledge has got a high degree and has chances to pass in the examination more and he'll have a greater degree in the akhirah so that is the reason acquiring knowledge is what most important is and especially in this month of ramadan if a person acquires knowledge the chances that he acquires the knowledge is higher and he can spread it to the others my final question for today is regarding music many muslims consider music to be allowed could you just confirm did the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam speak against music there is a great difference of opinion as far as the muslim are concerned whether music is allowed or not whether it's permitted or not but there is no verse in the quran directly prohibiting music but there are indications allah says in the quran in surah luqman chapter number 31 verse number 6 it says that among them there are those people who purchase idle tales without knowledge and without meaning and they mislead the people away from the path of allah subhanahu wa taala and they ridicule the path of allah subhanahu wa taala these are the people who will receive a humiliating punishment so based on this if you see the tafsir many of the tafsir say that this idle tales without knowledge without meaning refers to anasamic songs and the musical instruments if you read the tafsir as far as the prophet prohibiting music there are very sahih hadith so if you read the hadith of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam then there will be no doubt whether it's permitted or prohibited our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it's mentioned in sahih bukhari word number 7 hadith number 5590 the beloved prophet said that from among my followers there will be some people who will make illicit sex that is adultery and fornication as well as wearing of silk drinking intoxicants and using musical instruments as legal now this hadith when it says that they will make certain things legal and we know that intoxicants is haram we know very well the adultery fornication is haram because it is mentioned along with these things which are forbidden musical instruments are mentioned along with them it indicate that the prophet has prohibited them but some people will make it legal and we know there are some scholars who today do permit that playing of music instruments is allowed so this hadith is very clear cut in saying that music instruments are haram but there are other sahih hadith which do permit some 
music instrument, especially the duff, that is the tambourine. If you read the hadith of a beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sahih Bukhari, volume number 2, hadith number 987, where the Prophet, while he was lying down, his hadith is narrated by Hazrat Naisha, Milla agreed with her, she says that two small girls were playing the tambourine and they were singing. When Hazrat Abu Bakr, Milla be pleased with him, the father of Hazrat Aisha, Milla be pleased with her, he comes and he says to them, let's stop it. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sleeping on a cot, he tells to Hazrat Abu Bakr, Milla be pleased with him, that let them do it. These are the days of Eid. You let them do it. Furthermore, there is a hadith in Tirmidhi, hadith number 3690, where a beloved Prophet, Musa Sallam, he says that there is a person who approaches the Prophet and tells him that I had vowed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if you come back victoriously, I will sing and I will play the duff, I will bang the tambourine. So the Prophet said, if you have vowed, then do it. If you have not vowed, then don't do it. So these hadith do indicate that musical instrument per se is haram, except for the dove that the tambourine, the Prophet did permit it sometimes. Dr. Zakia, thank you very much for that answer, that final answer today in this, what's been a very, very interesting and informative, as usual, session regarding the topic Ramadan, what is recommended and what is discouraged. Thank you very much, Dr. Zakia. Jazakallah khairan. Wa'iyakum. Brothers and sisters, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have understood and are ready to implement all the suggestions that have been made today. I certainly must take on board some of the advices that Dr. Zakia has given today. So brothers and sisters, tomorrow we will be discussing acts recommended and discouraged whilst fasting. Part 3. Join us then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. وبركاته حافظين ذاكرين قانتين قاشرين مسلمين مؤمنين للإله عابدين شهونا صبر وعتق وقنوة فيه صدق يومنا صبر ورق بدمع البائسين رمضان قد أذلت بالصيام وأقل مصعدا أهلا وفي الله توفيك A friendly message by Dr. Zakir Way to salvation. The way to salvation has been prescribed. The glorious Quran in Surah Al Asr, chapter number 103, verse number 1 to 3. Wal Asr, my time. Innal insan al Indeed, mankind is in loss. Illa lazina amunu. Except those who have believed. Wa amilu salihat and done righteous deeds and advised each other to truth and advised each other to patience there are minimum four criteria required for any human being to enter Jannah that is paradise these are Iman that is faith that is righteous deeds that is advising each other to truth that is Dawatul Islam calling people to submit to God and sabr, advising each other to patience its significance has been emphasized by Imam Shafi who said if people were to ponder on the Surah it would have been sufficient for their salvation Peace TV the solution for humanity